the dear ones, it's Alice, I'm of the stars. Well, lately I've been dealing a lot with uh, amazing astral stories. And so I have one to tell you today. Incredible astral story. Um, sometimes, uh, especially at night, I log on to um, people who have very dense, dark thoughts, typically who are involved in drugs, or especially the drug trade, selling drugs, or uh, they might be involved in activities that injure the physical bodies of other people, or the spirit, spirit of other people. Also in black magic, people who deal in black magic uh, tend to fall into these, these very dense, dark uh, thought forms. And so I encounter these at night. Uh, uh, for some reason, uh, probably, in my opinion, the lack of vitality globules, uh, which, um, which allow the body to absorb a lot of um, vitality during the daylight hours. Uh, these globules are at their lowest ebb in the wee small hours of the morning. And uh, so, generally speaking, that, those are the times when uh, black magic is practiced. So anyway, uh, I was encountering these, these, this particular person who was thinking very, very full of hatred thoughts with regard to yours truly, me. <laughs> and so the conversation was going along in rather a halting style. And uh, he thought a particularly like deep hatred, this is like a long-standing pattern of hatred that, that existed amongst the people that he knew. So uh, he and the people that he knew had held a, a grudge against me for oh, more than a decade long time and uh, yeah, I didn't know him but I had seen his countenance once not too long ago um, and that's a whole separate story but I should probably tell that story so I thought I would go and visit this place to see how it was faring with regard to its level in the astral realm. You know, we're all proceeding through the astral realm as we arise and ascend and awaken into the, on our way to the fifth dimension, which is the realm of Christ consciousness. And people are at various uh, levels of the astral realm right now as they're experiencing and releasing and, and clearing through their soul field. So, Anyway, uh, I thought uh, a few weeks back, I thought I'd go and visit this place, which was relatively distant from where I, li I live. So I took some time and I went down there. And the first thing I saw was um, a few blocks from this place, uh, there was someone in a, uh, like a little vehicle that's used to sweep the streets privately. And this person was like, uh, um, had a dark aspect to him. And I, I, I saw him near an intersection on a residential street, and it, it put me off to the extent where I turned around right there at the intersection and went back a block, and then decided to go ahead and go forward again. So I came back, and there he was still at that intersection, making a circle round, okay, there, without the leaf sweep thing being used, okay, he was just circling around there, right there, and it seemed to my waking mind that he was waiting for me specifically. This was a bad omen. <laughs> because riding next to him, I saw a demon. Now, I very rarely see demons these days, you know, so that set me up straight. There's typically no demons left around the Los Angeles area, okay. So, so I continued onward. My destination was a few blocks farther on, and I lost my way once, and then I found my way back, and then 
I parked near the place, near the gates of the place. And I went and I had this omen before me, uh, you know, and I've learned to pay attention to omens because there are a way that my, the angelic realm sends me warnings about problems that are very important to my duration on earth. Once, with regard to this same group of people, I disregarded what the angels told me. And that has led to a world of trouble since then and an, and an understanding of the very important uh, role that the angels play in guiding our life on earth. So since then, I've decided always, always to listen to the angelic realm. And that day, the angelic realm was telling me to be very much on guard and to steer clear of physical danger. So, I parked the car and I very gingerly walked along to the gate of the place where I was going. Now, at the time, I did not know for sure whether the person that I had seen who was accompanied by a demon and driving a little cart thing that had a, um, a, a leaf brush wheel uh, on it for sweeping streets. I did not know whether that person was connected with this place or not. Okay, so full of presentiment. <laughs> this is what prophets sometimes do. Full of presentiment, I stepped inside the gate and my angel like warned me without words. The feeling I got was that I should go no farther. Fortunately, there was like a little bench right there next to the gate. So I sat at the bench and as I sat there, the person that had been driving the cart drove up on the cart and entered that place and started off in the direction along the edge of the fence um, opposite me. From there I heard on the astral plane um, him talking to someone, uh, someone whose name is known to many on the astral plane, uh, that name being merely um, a synonym, uh, a pseudonym for the word Satan or Lucifer or Baal, okay? But there's this common name that's used a lot on the, on the, on, in the astral stories. It really means, it means Satan. Okay, so he was talking to Satan or his demon was talking to Satan and it said, have you, have you, de have you succeeded in detaining her on the grounds? And, and the gardener said back, he said, um, he said, no, she's too close to the gate. This was off in the distance to where the cart was going along that I heard that. So from that I gathered I'd best stay quite close to the gate, <laughs> which I did. So I was sitting there and walked past me this person that I heard this other night I was hearing the dark thoughts from that person. I had never met this person uh, before but he was associated with some people that I met more than a decade ago and had heard from them uh, or inherited from them this grudge. Now grudges, what do they do? They retard our souls from the awakening process. They hold us down in the hell worlds until we can set ourselves free of that a mental filter, that grudge mental filter, whatever it is, until we can let that thought go through um, forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. So, nevertheless, the story went on. <laughs> yeah, something like this. Um, I said, full of curiosity, why did you wish to detain me? And someone said, far off in the distance, that they wanted to to, how did it go, mind control me and learn what I had to tell them. And from the, also at the same time, I got a visual image of the gardener um, uh, roping my hands behind my back and of being uh, killed afterwards. So all the more reason to stick close to the gate and soon to be gone, which is in fact what happened. Um, so from that visit, what I learned in the way of angelic intelligence, <laughs> 
I learned that it's best to steer clear of that place for me personally, for my own personal safety. And I also learned uh, that there's at least one demon left in Los Angeles. Um, so, so now, so that's the setting. And so that particular night, which was some weeks later, um, that I spoke of at the beginning of this video, I encountered this same person that I saw on my prior visit. And he was specifically, um, uh, he was specifically um, miffed that they hadn't been able to lay hands on me that day. I would say that amongst that group, the um, modus operandi, is that how you say it right now, is to capture, uh, at least on the astral plane, the astral story is that they're capturing women with children or pregnant women on their grounds and torturing them to death. Now this is the sort of thing that only comes up on the astral plane in the end times. These are the end times, but they're also the time of new beginning. So we have to take into consideration that the timeline of people who are holding grudges and, uh, and operating, too, on the, on the notion of anything goes, uh, if it's good for my group, uh, that the ends justify the mean, or, or dealing in drugs, or dealing in, in, in prostitution, uh, hold, holding other people, uh, as as prostitutes working for them, or uh, dealing with black magic, or uh, sacrificing other people's lives or health, or um, spiritual welfare for the sake of their group, those or for their own personal sake, these sorts of people are 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 being dragged down in a kind of a a gravity well. Uh, some say. Some are proposing on the astral plane that this may be the case. Uh, it's as if they were sinking down in the astral plane into the deepest, heaviest part of, of the astral plane, maybe in the center of Earth. And the very center of Earth is a healing place, too. So the minute that they can release these mental notions, these emotional-like complexes that are so heavy and so dark and dense, they will spring forth into the halls of Menti and be healed. But this was not the case on that day quite yet, that night when I was talking. So, um, so I was talking and this person this is how it went. This person had a particularly dense, dark thought, in this case to do with hating me and wanting my life to end. It could have been with regard to anyone. It was the density of the thought that was important. And I had it at, as they spoke, in fact, right before they spoke, I had a presentiment that, that something catastrophic was going to happen there. And, and, and there would, that there was nothing that I could do about it. And that, in fact, I would maintain a neutral attitude and let the divine do whatever it needed to do in this situation. Um, so I held like a neutral mind. And my own thoughts, which are often rather more ca catastrophic than the divine concocts, ran towards the notion that, the, like in the Old Testament, you know, everything, Sodom and Gomorrah, everything was going to like pile down on this person. This person was going to like, you know, everything was going to burn or, or there would be a terrible earthquake and everything would go down. That's what I was thinking, I guess, because I was raised on the Bible, right? <laughs> so... I was ready, just in case. I was just waiting and holding this this neutral space. And in the in the in a nanosecond, uh, the person on the other side they said, "Is this building shaking?" And I'm I'm kind of holding my breath. <laughs> Is this building shaking? And I'm going, "Oh no, not that!" <laughs> right? And so, and then he and then he apparently walked outside. And and outside, when he was outside of the building, there was someone locked inside locked up like deta a woman detained inside and had been detained for apparently many years for reasons that I don't know. This was the person that was supposed to be like in charge of that place and he was the jailer and he came outside and he um, 
and he apparently saw that there was a crack in the foundation of that building. And there was a bunch of commotion about whether he should go back in, whether it was going to like fall down or like that. All this is beside the point. The point of the thing is that these deep, dark uh, feelings and thoughts that we have right now can actually manifest on Earth. Not to the extent, the catastrophic extent that I considered possible, but to the minimum optimal extent that God considers the right thing. Okay, so keep that in mind as you pursue these sorts of uh, careers, even on, even on your, I know your preferred timeline, uh, may create these kinds of catastrophes, minor catastrophes. But if you optimize your timelines, then this probably won't happen. It probably won't be the case. Okay? So speaking to the deep and dark in each of us, let us optimize our timelines and let us improve our physical circumstances as well as our spiritual circumstances. Y'all take care. Love you lots. What a story, huh? What an amazing story circling around the newosphere.